Hello and welcome to the session on benzodiazepines. In this module, we'll cover mechanism, clinical use, and its adverse effects. So we can call benzodiazepines frenzodiazepine. Why is that? Because it helps us remember stuff. Why? Because frenzodiazepines increase the frequency of the opening of the GABA-A channel. So what is a GABA-A channel? A GABA-A channel is actually an, an inhibitory channel which is located inside the inside the wall of a neuron which when opens can cause negative chloride channels to move negative chloride ions my apologies to move inside the neuron now when these negative chloride ions move inside the neuron they can cause the hyperpolarization of the cell now as we know that already at baseline at resting membrane potential of a neuron is actually negative is somewhere around as far as i remember minus 45 to minus 60 or 70 so when even more uh, chloride ions are moving inside this cell it could cause the hyperpolarization of this neuron now why are we so concerned about the hyperpolarization of neuron because if we are hyperpolarizing a neuron means the conduction potential that is required to conduct an action potential through this neuron is actually increased or becomes almost impossible. So basically increased GABA activity means increased chloride ions moving inwards which leads to hyperpolarization. We'll write that down. Okay, so increased, sorry, increased GABA activity leads to hyperpolarization. I'm writing it down so you remember. And this this increased GABA activity is caused by caused by frenzodiazepines. Frenzodiazepines which which increase the frequency. Why is hyperpolarization it's hyperpolarization not a word? It is. Okay. So which frenzodiazepines which increase the the frequency of the opening of the channels of channels opening right so that's all let's move to the next slide now why why do we need decreased nerve impulse conduction we could need decreased impulse conduction in conditions where we want less action potential to travel in conditions where we want actually cns depression where we want where we want decreased sensory supply decreased uh, decreased action potentials being carried towards and from the neuron so what so this is a slide on GABA a receptor so whenever the cell is hyperpolarized it's in the relative refractory period what's the relative refractory period so there are multiple refractory periods I'm not going to discuss all of them so one of those is absolute refractory period so absolute refractory period is when the conduction of a nerve impulse in a neuron after it has conducted one action potential is almost impossible so when it's impossible it's absolute refractory period when it's almost impossible meaning it requires more meaning it requires more energy more charges more polarization more potential to actually conduct a neuron that's not that uh, an action potential is a relative refractory period right so hyperpolarization hyperpolarization as we can see here is a part of the relative refractory period this is a part of the relative refractory period we'll we'll look up we can even look up a picture of this of a relative refractory period right so this is another uh, example of that same channel so this is the benzodiazepine binding site this is the GABA binding site on the channels and there, there are other binding sites for uh, ethanol alcohol volatile anesthetics propofol and neurosteroids right so when the cell is hyperpolarized it's in the relative refractory period meaning conduction is still possible but requires more energy requires more stimulation okay so when are they used they're they're used in conditions such as anxiety disorders in panic disorders now you need to remember that ssris and snris are usually first line because of uh, decreased side effects of these drugs and uh, benzodiazepines are reserved for use in more acute settings now it's the drug of choice for treating status epilepticus and grand mal seizures it's the drug of choice for status epilepticus you need to remember this and then 
for treating alcohol withdrawal i'm not going to discuss the stages of alcohol withdrawal in this video but we can make a separate video on, on that so for that we usually used a uh, longer acting benzodiazepine as it says in the slides so we can also have iv administration for treatment of seizures for treatment of withdrawal for treatment of and other conditions and for induction of anesthesia we can also use uh, benzodiazepines in iv we can use it to treat insomnia because it's not used due to high risk of dependence and other other sleep disorders in children in parasomnias which is characterized by abnormal activity during sleep now Let's remember the types of benzodiazepine. You need to remember the drug by the AM suffix. It usually sounds like alprazolam, triazolam, oxazepam. It, it has that PAM suffix with it, right? So now, and then it's divided into shorter acting and longer acting, right? So shorter acting, you can remember with the mnemonic ATOM. ATOM. ATOM is alprazolam, triazolam, oxazepam, and midazolam. And longer acting is diazepam and chlorodiazeposide now this is the only exception to this rule so you need to remember chlorodiazeposide now there are a few other things that you need to remember which is lot okay there's a lot to remember about benzodiazepine you need to do there's a lot to remember of benzodiazepine and that might be damaging for your liver you need to remember this thing there's a lot to remember about benzodiazepine and that might be damaging for your liver. So lot is actually three drugs which are used in liver disease. Lorazepam, oxazepam and triazolam. They're used in liver disease because they don't have that first metabolism. They're not dependent on that much of first metabolism as other benzodiazepines. Let's talk about the adverse effects. As I talked earlier, dependence. Dependence is a notable, noticeable side effect which is characterized by tolerance, uh, drug seeking behavior in which the patient will try to actually obtain benzodiazepine, these drugs by some uh, whatever actions required. And uh, it, it is characterized by the patient trying to get this drug again and again and trying to use it. And then we could have CNS depression. CNS depression caused by this drug can be even additive, meaning if you add another and add another uh, add another drug which causes CNS depression like alcohol like barbiturates so we can have an additive effect meaning both of these uh, both of these effects actually add up and cause even more CNS depression so basically if drug 1 causes A and drug B causes B so we could have A plus B and their uh, individual effects are combined to form an even more important uh, CNS depression. Then we could have respiratory depression. Now noticeable uh, an important thing is that this respiratory depression is less than that of barbiturates. And the treatment is with flumenazil. Flumenazil, it, the use of flumenazil is actually a bit uh, is, is a bit problematic is a bit controversial because it can actually cause seizures due to uh, withdrawal of these drugs. So benzodiazepine withdrawal is characterized by all of these symptoms, tremors, anxiety, dysphoria, depressed mood, psychosis, and seizures. And that's pretty much it for this. If, if you need to watch uh, another video on barbiturates, so we have uploaded that on my channel as well. Thank you.